So in this video, we're gonna be talking about controlling your, uh, the turns, turning your motor scooter, your motorcycle at higher speeds. The last video was about uh, turning your motorcycle at low speed. So we did things like U-turns and uh, figure eights. So this video, uh, we're gonna learn how to turn our motor scooter at higher speeds, and we're gonna do it via two main um, activities. One is by doing a slalom ride, so we get the feel of leaning the motorcycle. Um, and then we're also gonna do what's, uh, what's known as the counter steer. Uh, so they're the two main uh, exercises that we're gonna cover in this video. Um, but first, let's do the slalom. So I've set up the markers here. I've set up the markers here, they're about 10 paces apart. Now the idea of this exercise, I'm just gonna weave in and out, in and out, and in and out. Um, but I'm gonna try and do it at a bit of a higher speed, higher than the last video. Now we're not gonna be pushing and put, moving the handlebars as much, but we're actually gonna be shifting the weight or shifting the balance of the motor scooter. So your motorcycle, so just consider this principle. It's very happy when it's going in a straight line. Ice cream man. It's very happy when it's going in a straight line because of the centrifugal forces that keep it upright. So for us to actually shift that uh, is kind of like working against the, the principles of physics. Um, so we so can keep this in mind that you're actually having to shift the shift the balance. Um, so how do you actually shift the balance and do this slalom ride? So I'd encourage you to first of all is just have a go at it, and then I'm going to uh, give you a couple of pointers. So here's what it looks like. So once you've had a go at it, um, you'll start to notice some things like, okay, how do I shift it from the left lean to the right lean? So uh, one little thing I'd like to encourage, now as kids, we do this naturally, it's, play, it's, a bit, it's called play. When we get to adults, we kind of lose that, uh, lose that uh, curiosity and a uh, thing called play. But in a safe and controlled environment, I would actually like to encourage you to play with the motorcycle a little bit in terms of uh, just experiment with different things, parts of your body. So when you're going through this time, just focus in on what your head's doing. So see how much you can control the lean of your bike by focusing on what you do with your head. After you've done that, try moving your shoulders and just feel what the bike does when you shift your shoulders. After that, try your elbows pulling your elbow down toward the ground. What happens when you push your, from the waist, from the hips up, from your like midriff, if you move to the front, or if you move to the side a little bit. So just experiment a little bit with your upper body and see what actually works best for you. So uh, I'm just gonna show you a little bit about what to do with your upper body as I ride here. Um, so. So first of all, we're gonna start thinking about our head. So as you go through your slaloms, like we learned in the last video, or eyes, chin and nose, point to where you want the motor scooter to actually go. So focusing on your face, focusing on your head. Once you're feeling comfortable with your head action, and, and remember your eyes should be looking to where you want the motorcycle to actually go. So you're not looking at the marker, because if you look, as we learned in the last video, if you're looking at an object, we get this thing called target fixation, and that's where your motorcycle goes. So don't look at the markers, look to the side, look to the path where your motor scooter wants to go. Then we shift to our shoulders. Now, what do you do with your shoulders? Just experiment a bit. What happens if I drop my shoulder down a little bit? What happens if I twist my chest a bit? What happens if I point my chest to where I want to go? So experiment a little bit now with your face, your head, and your shoulders and chest. And keep this principle in mind. You wanna, you wanna look to where you're going. Naturally, your shoulders are gonna go that way and square up. So it's kinda like your shoulders drop, but square up as well as you're going through the slaloms. Okay, once you're feeling comfortable with your head action, your shoulder action, and your chest, we now uh, shift our focus to our elbows. Now with your elbows, the principle is that you drop your elbows to the, you drop an elbow to the ground. So when you're left, you, sh you drop your elbow, left elbow to the ground, right elbow down, 
left elbow down. And you see when you are dropping your elbow, your face naturally goes in that direction, your chest opens up towards that direction, and you naturally, your upper body leans a little bit towards that direction as well. So have a few goes at really thinking about dropping that elbow, dropping the elbow, dropping the elbow, dropping the elbow. Once you're feeling comfortable with that, last little tip to help you get through the slaloms is thinking about your face again and the common expression of kissing the mirror. So we've got our mirrors here, so when I want to go to the left, I bring my mouth to the left. Kiss the mirror, kiss the mirror, kiss the mirror, kiss the mirror. So we're actually kind of pushing our chin towards the direction where we want to go. Now from your waist down, from the hips down, hips and legs, don't do anything. Just keep them rigid, keep them as one with the bike, a part of the bike. It's all about shifting the balance with your upper body. So keep that in mind, when your motorcycle is going straight, centrifugal forces are at work and it's comfortable. It wants to keep going straight. So this exercise, we have to shift the balance. We have to move that balance. We have to work against the forces of nature. And we do this with our upper body. So with our upper body, we can shift the balance, shift the balance. When we shift the balance of our motorcycle, the motorcycle turns. Shift the balance, the motorcycle starts to turn gently. Now this has some real world applications. When you're out in the street and you're riding along at speed and you see some debris on the road, maybe a manhole cover, maybe uh, debris, manhole covers, uh, potholes. How do I gently shift this, shift the balance of my motorcycle so I can turn gently and avoid that danger? And then shift the balance to get back to my original riding position. So this is very real world application. So I encourage you to get out in the car park like I am Set up some markers. Now the markers that I've used, uh, they're the sports kind, and it doesn't matter if I hit them. I hit one just before, I heard it, but it didn't move and my bike didn't adjust course at all. So if, when you set up some markers, make sure you have some markers that uh, doesn't matter if you actually knock them or hit them. Uh, it's not gonna shift the balance of the motorcycle. So I have a few practices at that, and then we'll move on to the counter steer. So the next exercise we're gonna do is called the counter steer. So the counter steer is all about shifting that balance. So just need a little bit of a physics lesson here. So what, some of the important uh, physics principles, the forces that we're, we're dealing with here in, uh, in with motorcycle riding is we have centrifugal and centripetal force. So this force is actually what keeps your bike upright. So thinking of centrifugal force, when something's going in a circle, there is a force that pushes away from the center of that circle. That's actually what, the, when you think about in terms of your wheels, that's what keeps your bike upright. So if that's spinning, those wheels are spinning fast, your bike is standing up nice and tall. Centripetal forces are forces that go the other way. They go toward the center. And realistically, you don't feel that when you're riding on a motorcycle. Uh, now, when it comes to doing a turn, if you think about when you're actually making a turn of a, turning of a motor scooter, motorcycle, you're actually starting another sort of a circle, another turn. So thinking that the, you know, way over here where the camera is, or my thumb is, is the center of the circle, and you're turning around that circle. So therefore, your centrifugal force will push you away. You're gonna push you the other way, and the centrifugal force will push you towards the center. So in easy terms to think of this is, uh, picture yourself driving in a car, when the car starts to turn, you'll feel the weight or the shift towards the opposite direction. Or if you go around a corner too fast in a car and you've got something on your dashboard, it slides to the side. That's centrifugal forces pushing you away. So in terms of motorcycle riding, if we start to turn one way, the force is going to push us the other way. So we've got to kind of counter balance. We need to, to, to work with these forces. So the, work, the force is centripetal, pushing into the center. Centrifugal pushing out are actually in balance. So this has got to do with our, our balance of our body. So that's uh, one of the key principles. Another, another uh, two uh, forces that we probably should mention is one is inertia. So you think of inertia, when a body is moving in a direction or an object, it wants to maintain that direction. So if you try and move it, it's like, no, 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 I don't wanna go that way, I wanna keep going that way. So inertia, if you wanna to turn to the left, for example, but you're going on a straight, inertia will say, inertia will wanna force your body in the straight direction, because it's comfortable going straight. It wants to continue that motion, but you're wanting to try and shift the, shift the motion in the other direction. So we are, we're working with inertia as well. 
And then the third one is about, uh, what's the third one? Gyroscopic forces. And you know what? I'm not even going to get into that. Uh, I think I've babbled on way too much about forces uh, for this, this video for a beginner. So just keep in mind, we're working with the principles of uh, forces and we need to make these forces work in our favor and counteract and counterbalance these forces so we have a comfortable turn. So with the last activity, the slalom, we were gently rolling to the right, gently to the left, gently to the right. With a counter steer, this is uh, how to get that shift in a much shorter space of time. So imagine in the real world scenario, there's an object on the road and we need to quickly shift to change the direction of our, of our motorcycle. We can't just do a gentle, gentle like we did in the slalom. So this is a natural progression. Once you're feeling comfortable with the slalom, we're now gonna to shift to this counter steer. So with the counter steer, so what we're trying to do, we, remember I mentioned earlier about we need to shift the balance. So that your motorcycle is comfortable going in a straight line with the centrifugal forces at work. So we need to kind of break this or shift this balance quite quickly. So what we need to do, so here is what the principle, if you, as we mentioned before, the way centrifugal forces work, if you naturally turn your motorcycle to the left, centrifugal force will push my body this way. So the turn here, centrifugal force will dictate I'm going this way. So that's one of the forces that we're gonna be actually using to our advantage. So here's how we do this counter steer. So basically, by shifting, turning that, then turning that handlebar, we will then feel our body, our body weight shift to the opposite direction, which also, as you'll notice with the bike, it then starts to drop this way because my weight is shifting to this side. Part two of that is because we start shifting, the wheel, the front wheel and the bars start to shift this side because this is where the forces are going. So I'll just do that again. We're rolling along. I turn to the left, my body shifts because of centrifugal force, and then my bike follows, and it actually shifts. So I'm, I'm riding along. I turn the bars to the left. My body shifts to the right. The bike drops to the right, and that's the direction the bike goes. I'll do it again, slow motion, step by step. I'll do it the opposite direction this time. So I want to go to the left. So what do I do in the, in the counter steer technique is I actually turn to the right. Then my body shifts to this side. The bike follows because of the lean and then it goes that direction. So it's kind of we're breaking or shifting the balance. So we're breaking that balance. So rather than just turning gently, we actually turn just a little, little turn to allow our body shift, body weight to shift and then the bike will follow. Now, to be quite honest, this is actually quite difficult to, to explain, and it takes a while to get the concept. So I'm just going to show you what happens in real life. I've set up a, some markers here. Now I'm going to pretend that this is an obstacle of some sort. Imagine this is a pothole or a bag of rubbish that's in the middle of the road. I'm going to be coming at a straight line at speed. So the technique I'm going to use is, first of all, in your brain, you need to make a quick decision. Which way am I going to go? If you're thinking too long, too slow, you're going to rant, run straight into the problem. So you need, to, you need to make a decision fairly early on. So observation is the key. Observation, you see the hazard. Second step, you plan which side you're going to go, which is the safest side to avoid that, that, uh, that problem. I'm going to pick the left side. With the handlebar, if I want to go to the left, I look to the left. We've learnt this principle uh, over and over again in these, these tutorials, the last video on this one. So I shift my focus because I want to go to the left. I also push to the left. So rather than turning and thinking about the pulling of the handlebar, think about it in terms of pushing. So I want to go to the left. I give my left handlebar a slight push, not big one, slight push. Because then this shifts the balance of my body to the left side, then my bike leans to the left, left side, and I get away from the danger. So I'll go through that again. I'm gonna to go to the right side this time. So I'm cruising along at speed. I see the problem up ahead. I decide I'm gonna to go to the right. With, 
I look to where I want my bike to go. Don't look to the danger. Look to the side of the danger where you want your motorcycle to go. I then give a slight push. So I want to go right. So my right handlebar, I give a slight push, which means that the handle, the, the front wheel will actually turn in the other direction, but you don't need to think about that too much. I push that side. My front wheel turns a little bit the other way, which creates the inertia or the centrifugal force for my body to go this side. Then my bike leans and away from danger. One last time in real time. Driving along, see the danger, look to where I want to go, push the bar a little bit, the drive, bike drops, and away we go, avoiding the danger. Now I'll do it in on my bike so you can see what it looks like. So it's, a, it's an unusual concept, the counter steer, and it takes some people a while to kind of get the concept and understand. So if you don't understand it immediately, that's fine, that's perfectly normal. This is also why you get out in the back of the car park area and practice it a bit. So you can actually start to feel, oh, I see what's happening. Now it's also, your, while you're doing it out in the back streets as well, is to start training your muscle memory because you're having to rethink, you're retrain your brain because when your brain at this stage is probably thinking, if I turn left, if I wanna go left, I turn the bars to the left. Now you're reprogramming your brain to say, if I wanna go left, I first turn the, turn the front wheel to the right. It doesn't make any sense to our logical brain so far. So we have to retrain this. So that's why I keep thinking, rather than saying turn the opposite way, if you want to go to the left, you give that slight nudge towards the direction with the left bar, which is actually turning it the right direction, but I don't want to think about that. So I want to go left, slight, slight nudge to the left, the direction I want to go, then the bike drops. Now, if you're watching this video you're at home and you're not on your bike, which is probably most people, don't feel stupid, but get your hands up in front of you and you can actually do a bit of practice at this. This is training your muscle memory. Picture you're on the motorcycle, picture pushing. If you wanna to go to the right, picture pushing to the right. Just a little push to the right, not a jab like this, a gentle push, just a gentle push. Feel it drop to the right. Practice at home, just get in training that muscle memory. This is what golfers do. This is what basketball players, they visualize things before they actually take those shots. And so pretend you're a professional athlete. Just visualize it, get your hands up, pretend you're on the motorcycle and push, push the direction, feel the bike drop. Focus, you wanna to go to the right, look to the right, push to the right, bike drops to the right. You wanna go left, look to the left, push to the left, bike drops to the left. So this is the principle, training your muscles, training your brain, reprogramming your brain. So when you're out on the road, you're going 100 kilometers per hour, you see that debris in front of you or you wanna shift the bike, you're not having to think, now do I turn left or right? Which way, where's my head go? You've already got this muscle memory. You know, boom, boom, way I go. So there's a natural progression to these exercises. I just want to uh, emphasize that. It's not by chance that first of all, we just learn how to turn. Then we learn how to do U-turns. Then we learn how to do the slalom, start using our upper body. Then we uh, program our brain and body and muscles to thinking about this counter steering method. Now we shift on to the next and last uh, exercise in this video, which is cornering. Beginners in particular have trouble with that cornering at speed. So we're gonna be using the counter steer method to set up, uh, uh, set up prior to turn, taking a corner. So I'm gonna set up the markers here and I'm gonna talk you through how to do some cornering. Okay, so I've set up the markers. So I've got myself a nice little corner here. And while I was setting up the markers, just having a look at the road surface here as well. And there's a few bit, bits and pieces of debris, rocks and things. So I'm just uh, clearing the surface. And then it made me realize, oh yeah, that was another force that's at work. A very important principle with motorcycle riding is friction. That's the force with your tire is making contact with the road surface. So you're not gonna have good friction if with your road, with your tires, if you're on the loose gravel, there was a bolt over here. So for the beginner, make sure you just, you've got a nice clean surface because you don't want your wheels losing that friction, losing any contact. If you're really interested in more about the principles, the, the, the forces at work with motorcycles, there's a lot of really good videos out there. However, I'm not gonna get uh, deep into that because I'm aiming this video for the beginner. And the beginner doesn't need, necessarily need to have 
a head full of physics. They need some real life practical skills, which is what this one is. Practical skill about how to take the corner. So, important thing that I actually just did, uh, I wasn't wasting time, I set up the markers, I checked the road surface, but now I'm also starting to mentally think about how am I gonna approach and take on this corner? So if I'm approaching this, this corner from this direction, I wanna actually think about what path am I gonna take? It's a really important principle of uh, successfully taking corners at speed. Now, for best view, we're gonna start on this left side here. So, just for the sake of this exercise, imagine this is a lane, one lane. This is not the whole road. So we're working within, within our lane. So picture there's another lane on the other side. Uh, but I'm just gonna talk about this one lane. So, here's our lane. Now, if we start on the blue side, our vision, our vision of the corner up ahead is really small. We've actually got a really tight view. If you look at the distance from here between the blue and the orange and the blue and the white, it's very short. Now imagine if this was a hill as well and we couldn't even see around the corner. So that's all our view is, it's really small. If we were to start on this left side, however, which is the yellow, pink and white markers, we now have a much, much better view of the opening where our bike is going. You can start to see around the corner a little bit. So when you're approaching a corner, you're approaching from this direction, we're gonna start on this side for best view, best control and best view. It's also important that you get your speed right, your shed speed, because you're probably coming, you're approaching a corner at speed. You need to shed the speed, slow the bike down, reduce the, uh, reduce the speed of your bike, because the, the, getting the speed right is really important to be done before the corner. You're not braking during the corner, that's bad technique. You wanna get your speed set up first so that you can coast through the corner at a controlled speed and then accelerate out of the corner. So as you're approaching, you're on, on this turn here, we're gonna be getting to the left side. We shed speed, shed speed, we get the speed to the correct, what we feel is comfortable. While we're doing this also, you can see the corner is opening up a lot more. Because we're on this left side, we've got a nice view, but we've got a nice turning arc as well. So about this point in here is where we want to start to make our turn. So this is where the counter steer comes in handy. We want our bike to go to the right. So there's going to be a quick nudge, not a nudge, just a gentle, gentle lean to the right. First of all, our, our face is going to be to the right. Face to the right, gentle nudge. Let me try a different camera angle. Just realized how close my face was there. Let's try a different camera angle. So you're approaching in here. Uh, your eyes and chin go towards you where you want your bike to go. And we're now aiming to the blue cones. So we start on the left side, the wide side, but then we're aiming to go past the blue. So we're, we're trying to make the easiest turn as possible. A nice wide arc as well. So that's the best part. And I'll draw you a picture in a moment. So we're starting here, we're shedding speed, shedding speed, shedding speed. About here is where we need to take the turn. So my focus goes to that direction. My right hand, a net, just a nudge to the right side. My bike drops and then I head this way. So that's where your counter steer. Now you maintain this consistent speed as you get close to the blue markers here. And as you're looking up ahead, you'll see that it starts to open up. The view up ahead starts to open up. When we get to the apex here of the corner, where they're aiming back to that left side of the lane because it's the widest arc and we are accelerating out. Now the reason we accelerate out, we're using centrifugal forces to our advantage because the accelerator will pick that bike up again straight. So we're shifting our motorcycle balance back to the upright with a bit of accelerator and then out of the corner we go. Let's see what it looks like in real life. So as you're a beginner, go for a walk around before you even ride the corner, set up your markers, look at the road surface, start thinking, start mentally preparing, and then have a go. So I'll try, I'll try, two diff I'll try three different camera angles for this. Uh, hopefully one of them works and one of them helps you. First of all, I'm gonna be facing me and I'm gonna try and talk you through what's happening. Then I'm gonna switch the camera around so you're looking ahead and you can see what I'm doing with my hands. And then I'll set the camera up on the side so you can get an overall view. So as we approach the corner, so as we approach, I'm going to the left side. I'm 
I'm looking to where I want to go, push, bike leans, and then I accelerate to the outside. Okay, starting on the left side, starting, I'm shedding speed, I'm getting my speed consistent. Counter steer to the top, apex of the blue, and then I accelerate out, pick up that bike again. Okay, so I've been talking a lot about uh, the, just then about the path you want to take. Um, once you get understanding of the path, you can then start thinking a little bit more back to your upper body. Where should your chin point? Where should your shoulders go? Dropping the elbow. Just to go and balance these, uh, these uh, forces at, and use them so and use them to your advantage and now now ideally if you've got these if you've got if you've got the forces balanced nicely it's going to be an easy turn if you're a beginner and you'll feel you feel that you're losing balance or you're having to push or pull the handlebars or hold on and you're feeling like really low in confidence uh, to overcome that, you need to practice in the back streets, and what you need to practice is just getting that balance right. So perhaps it's getting that counter steer set up first of all, so you can shift the bait, the weight. Once you've shifted the weight, if you don't have enough balance uh, toward the center or the, the toward the corner, you'll feel that inertia and centrifugal force pushing you out. If you feel like you're pushing, your body is still wanting to leave the corner we need to shift our balance back down and we need to drop that bike a little bit lower so that's where something like drop an elbow can come in handy or kiss the mirror so if you feel like you your balance is shifting too far out we need to get that balance back over and you do it with your upper upper body if you feel like you're pushing the handlebars don't push the handlebars kiss the mirror drop your elbow drop a shoulder move your chest towards so use your upper body rather than your arm strength because what you're trying to probably do is fight against them or counter fight against some of the natural forces at play so this is the key to taking corners getting that balance right uh, now also this is probably where i need to talk to you about safety gear whenever you're doing this wear a helmet wear gloves wear jackets wear long pants wear shoes uh only reason i'm not doing it is because i keep talking to the camera and it's pretty hard to hear me <laughs> with it with a helmet on and it's also impossible to hold the camera with my gloves on. Um, so do as I say, not as I do. So that concludes my video today, mostly because a gust of wind came up and knocked my GoPro to the ground and now it doesn't work again. So I'm filming a conclusion now from my phone. Uh, but so ho hopefully this video has helped you understand some of the principles of cornering and turning a motorcycle at speed. So the conclusion is, Please practice out in the back streets. Practice and train your muscle memory so you're feeling comfortable. So when you're out amongst the traffic, you're not having to think. The more you have to think about what to do, the more time you're traveling and that traveling could result in ending up in an accident. So we don't, we, we wanna reduce this thinking processing time. And this is the challenge from going from a, a beginner to being a comfortable and confident rider is how to reduce that thinking about the skills. So this video is aimed for beginners and their skill acquisition and skill development. So get out in the car parks, practice, practice, practice until it's happening naturally. If some these things like cornering and stopping and turning are all happening naturally and feeling comfortable, you're ready for the streets. Then you go out into the streets and the, the you'll, you'll be out because your brain is going to be engaged in a lot about the traffic. So you, you want your brain focused and your eyes focused on the traffic, not about the operation of the actual bike.